When you imagine a gangster, there's no chance you ever thought of a female gangster. Traditionally, organized crime hierarchies relegated women to the role of the wife, mother, or at best, low-level criminal. In recent years, however, this has been changing. In Italy, the police crackdown on the mafia from the 1980s onwards has meant that male mobsters headed to prison often give their assets to their wives and daughters. In Italy alone, though women make up only 2.5% of those sent to prison for mafia-linked crimes, they control around a third of all mafia financial resources. You probably get the idea. Women are as involved in organized crimes as men. In this video, we take a look at the world's most dangerous female gangsters. Stay tuned and watch. Judy Moran Judy Moran was born on December 18, 1944. She is the head of the Moran family, a group of infamous criminals from Melbourne, Australia. And yes, in case you're wondering, Australia has gangs too. Moran was married to Leslie John Cole, who was shot dead in a Sydney drug-related gangland conflict in 1982. She had two sons, Mark Cole and Jason Moran, who she had with her second husband, Louis Moran. Life as a Moran, however, is anything but safe. For long, her son Mark was murdered in 2000. Her other son, Jason Moran, was murdered in 2003, and her second husband, Louis Moran, was also killed in 2004. That doesn't mean Judy was innocent through all this. In 2009, her husband's brother, Desmond Moran, was murdered, and Judy, along with three accomplices, were arrested for the murder. She was charged and subsequently convicted of this murder. Judy was sentenced in 2011 to 26 years in jail and 21 years with no parole. The Moran family, on top of having generally short lifespans, were famous for being drug traffickers in Australia. Judy Moran took advantage of their popularity and published an autobiography of her experiences just under two weeks after her husband Louis Moran's death. That book, along with many television series they made about Judy, are pieces of media that made the Morans popular in Australia. Enadina Arellano Felix de Toledo Enadina Arellano Felix de Toledo, co-founder of the Tijuana Cartel, was born April 12, 1961. She is identified as the world's first female drug lord by the Drug Enforcement Agency thanks to her cold-blooded ways of taking care of business. Enadina, alongside her brothers, founded the Tijuana Cartel and would play a pivotal role as a logistical accountant for the criminal organization. Throughout most of the 1990s, the Tijuana Cartel was run by her six brothers. After the fall of the financial mastermind in the cartel, she would step up from her role of money laundering and financial administration to take up the position, eventually leading the cartel after the arrest of her brother Eduardo Felix. Although Enadina was born in Sinaloa to a family of drug traffickers, as a child she never harbored dreams of running the family business, but her aspirations to normalcy were abandoned after her two brothers were declared wanted by the U.S. and Mexican government. Eventually, most of her brothers would find themselves either incarcerated or deceased, leaving Enadina to manage the financial aspect of the organization, oversee alliances, and direct the myriad of crimes the Tijuana cartel would commit under her leadership, including monumental contracts with drug suppliers in Colombia. Enadina is therefore the quintessential female drug boss. Sandra Avila Beltran Sandra is a Mexican cartel member and an incredibly powerful and important player in the Mexican drug business. Dubbed La Reina del Pacifico, or the Queen of the Pacific, Mexican and American officials considered her as an important link between the Sinaloa cartel and the Colombian Norte de Valle cartel. Born in October 1960, Beltran has been twice married with both her husbands being ex-policemen who left the service to become drug traffickers. Unfortunately for both of Beltran's husbands, they would meet their ends at the hands of hired assassins. Beltran was arrested on September 28, 2007, and was charged with organized crime and conspiracy to drug trafficking. Her cover story as a housewife who made clothes for a living didn't exactly fly, and although some of the charges against her were later dropped, she was still held for possession of illegal weapons and money laundering. She was extradited to the U.S. to answer for her criminal charges. That wasn't all the time she would experience behind bars, however. Beltran was then deported back to Mexico, where she was immediately arrested on money laundering charges and was sentenced to five more years in prison and a fine. She was eventually released in 2015 and now lives in the city of Guadalajara, having spent a total of seven years in prison and two years in isolation for her crimes. Thelma Wright Up next we have Thelma Wright. Thelma Wright's foray into the Philadelphia drug scene began when her husband Jackie Wright, a major player in the drug game, was murdered. She was known for transporting cocaine and heroin between Los Angeles and Philadelphia. 
Thelma met her husband Jackie when she was in her early 20s, and after his murder, she had two choices, live life on the straight and narrow, or pick up where her husband left off. Unfortunately, Wright wasn't one to give up the prospect of easy and plentiful money, so she began transporting drugs across the U.S. Her turning point would occur when she found herself in a life-or-death shootout. That moment would change her life forever. She would turn her life around and give up her crown as the gangster queen of Philadelphia. Thelma enrolled at Temple University, where she studied real estate management, so at least she had a life to fall back on. After Wright left her life of crime behind for good in 1991, she published a memoir a decade later, called With Eyes from Both Sides, Living My Life In and Out of the Game. You don't hear about the prison system changing many hardened criminals so drastically. Maria Leone Maria Leone ruled over a criminal empire with connections to a human smuggling ring while being the mother of 13 children. You heard that right. She wasn't just involved in human trafficking, though. She would also smuggle drugs and undertake contract killings, among several other crimes. Maria sat like the queen spider in a web spun across North and South America. She had strong ties with the Mexican Mafia and terrorized Northeast Los Angeles for two decades. That is, until she was sentenced to more than eight years in a U.S. federal prison with orders for deportation. Immediately upon release, Maria's reign as the much-feared head of a drug-dealing dynasty would come to an end, thanks to the death of one of her children, Danny Leone. He had died in a shootout with the police while wielding an AK-47 back in 2008. Her problem started when she decided to attend his funeral in the U.S. She would enlist the support of the Mexican Mafia, joining the ranks of some of the most dangerous gangsters in Los Angeles. Since she was banned from entering the U.S., she decided to be taken there by a less than legal route. Unfortunately for her, the members of her gang were already under police surveillance, so it wasn't exactly challenging to arrest her and her accomplices. The real tragedy, other than the several victims of her crimes, of course, is Maria never getting to mourn her son properly before being whisked off to prison. Maria Licciardi Maria Licciardi was born on March 24, 1951, and is an Italian criminal affiliated with Camorra. She rose to power and took over as the head of the Licciardi clan after her two brothers and her husband were arrested. She was the first woman to become the boss of the Licciardi clan and took over as head of the Second Digliano Alliance. She brought together a fragile informal coalition of 20 Camorra clans in order to expand control of the city's most lucrative rackets. Maria would commit several crimes from drugs and cigarette smuggling to protection and prostitution, playing a key role in expanding the city's drug trade market. Under her leadership of Second Digliano Alliance would become more organized, sophisticated and powerful. Maria introduced revolutionary changes to the clan, expanding the depths of their criminal activities even further. The most important among these changes was their involvement in the prostitution trade. Prior to Maria's leadership, the Camorra had a code of conduct that forbade them from profiting from prostitution. However, Maria wouldn't just break this code. Under her leadership, the Camorra would buy women and minors from the Albanian Mafia for $2,000. Many of them were deceived with the promise of legitimate work and a chance to escape the crushing poverty of their homeland, only to be enslaved, drugged, and forced into prostitution. Thankfully, Maria's reign of terror would come to an end when she was arrested in 2001. That's it for this video of the most powerful women bosses. Hope you enjoyed watching this one. Thanks for watching.